Good evening, everybody. Forgive me for a minute, guys. Uh, good evening, Jeff. Good evening, Wendy. I just moved off of my reference. I've just lost it for a second. I'm just trying to find it again. And I know I have it here somewhere. Just where? and teach me to touch things Gotcha. Okay. Luke, good evening to you, young lad. How are you doing? Um, good. I hope you can all hear me nicely. Um, da, 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 da. evening Jeff, evening Wendy, there's three of you on the chat, but it seems eight watching, which is good. I don't know if any of the eight of you who are watching want to say hello in the chat. You're more than welcome. You don't have to say any more than that. It's just nice to know who is watching. Derek, good evening. Um, nice to see you. Mark, good evening to you. Thanks for joining us again, both of you. Um... Oh, had a nice big dinner and I'm sort of all tired and all happy at the moment. So, and had a bit of glass of red wine too. <laughs> I thought, why should Wendy be the only person? Sorry, Wendy. There you go, my darling. All right. Um, yeah, so I had a nice glass of red to start the night off, which is really good. So we're going to have a little go at this gull. Um, we'll wait a little while longer. Good evening, Ben. Nice for you to join us. Thank you. Um, I've got brush in hand. I'm ready to go. Luke, I'm sorry. I, I'm good. That's not, sorry I missed the last one. I'll be trying my best not to miss it again. Hey, not a problem. You've got things to do, mate. You can't always be around to watch what I'm doing. Uh, as much as nice it is. Thank you very much. Um, but we've all got lives outside of watching Paul Apps paint pictures. <laughs> no, you haven't. None of you have. You should always be tuned in. End of. That's it. All right. Uh, I've got a lemon ginger barley water. Mm. It's goody goody tonight. <laughs> well, I had your glass of red, I'm afraid. So if you go looking in your freezer or in your fridge, I mean, you won't find it there. Because it's down my tummy. All right, okay. I'm being <laughs> impressed. The wine's got to me already. <laughs> oh well, I could be a little bit leery. I should go and have a top up, and then we'll see what happens with this gull. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So, gull it is. Now then. Um, da -da, da -da 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 -da. Just checking, just seeing. Probably ought to get underway. I've got more lemon ginger barley water. <laughs> Hi, Teresa. Uh, thanks for dropping by. 
and watching. Now you'll notice that I have got a good big canvas tonight, a great biggie. Because I felt that this goal needed a bit of room and I didn't want to do it on a small one so I felt that I'd do a bigger one. Now, the caveat to that is that in two hours it's extremely hard to get everything covered in something of this size and so I will see how we go. Uh, my ambition is to get this goal down and a lot of around what's going on. And uh, if I don't get all filled out to the edge with full detail, I hope you'll understand. It'll be something that I'll do off camera and um, probably even show you on the next stream just how it ended up. If, it, if I get or I need to have extra time on it. We'll see. Um, but it is a same type of gesso board as normal. It's a 2.4 millimeter panel, which has had three coats of gesso. The last one being a color coat and you can see there is an awful lot of brush marks left in indentations. It's very random. I don't know if the, you can pick that up from the lights maybe just a little bit. You can see all that randomness with a larger brush when I put the gesso on. So that's what that's about and it's very same. Let me just, if I can find one. Not that you can see. This one hasn't been rubbed down yet. I don't know if it can be picked up. But you can see the heavy texture there. This panel is the same timber. But the panel is covered with three coats of rabbit skin glue and whiting. Just to give you an idea of the difference. Uh, and that is a much more absorbent surface. So it's a little bit harder to get a fine drawing going on with that. So this is why I've gone for the painted one. Ah, uh, da 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 da. Right. I can stop yawning five minutes. That'd be terrible. I do apologise, everybody. Right. <laughs> I'm going to start this before I fall asleep and go crashing out. Okay. Normal way to start is just my just uh, my umber. So hopefully you can see this. And I'm going to bring up the reference. I'm just going to start by doing what I did last time and just literally plotting out somewhere here where these rocks are and then where I want the bird to start which I'm going to put it somewhere about there and where it ends nobody knows <laughs> I'm going to put this piece of rock down through here just all suggestive marks that may start life there it may be moved I don't know Sue good evening to you thanks for joining um, we are up to 11. Um, just wondering if any of our good American friends will be joining us tonight. And maybe um, James from Spain, if he's around. Right, I'm looking more at the bird now. And I'm using just a fine tip brush. This is just a very small ivory um, dagger brush, which I'm using. And I'm just looking at the shape once more um, and I'm doing it in sort of the angles that I sort of suggested last time like little jerky movements that we can refine and clean up later now it is a little counterproductive to use a dark brown drawing uh, when I want a lot of white in here but hopefully that will not cause too much of a problem for me I'm just going to put the eye in and then we will start judging everything else from those positions there. The eye is well forward, the head goes further back. And I'm just going to start looking at some of the lovely shapes that we had in here from before. And coming down here, and then we've got that bit over the back. That nice sort of pointy tear shaped thing like that and then we come out through here to the tail flights and the shoulder and it sort of bumps out at that point it's a little lower there's the wing and they are sort of level if you put a line through there that's the sort of level you're looking at Michael, good evening to you. Uh, thank you for joining us. James, Buenos Aires. <laughs> Sorry mate. I can't even say it. I'm not even going to start. 
It's one of those, and uh, good evening, James. Let's do it the proper way. Um, now I'm just going around and tipping in little bits of information here and there, and I'm leaving it fairly loose, I hope, to try and manage to change things if I need them. Now once again, I'm going, I can't remember from the last time the dimensions, but I'm looking at the hedge sort of size there, needs to be about there, and, and we are pretty much there on that, so that's good. A bit more paint, let's just look at the top of the feathers here. We've got the nice little crease between the two parts of the uh, wing feathers at the top there, and the folded section of the shoulder, and that is a nice shape down like so. Now the, the thing is that unlike when we did watercolour we had a situation where I went from um, light through to the dark. With oils of course that's completely the opposite. We're going to do our light, our darks first and then we will go back in with all our light values at the end and our final lights are our highlights. Those are those we're going to be putting in later on. Now I'm just going to look at this head here. I think that maybe this will come this way a little bit. So I'm going to bring that all the way over. We're going to take some of this out like so. Looks a flipping mess and I do apologize for that. But it's the great thing about oil. You can't do this of course with watercolor. You are committed. So with the oils I do have the ability to play around. Now that neck comes out as we discussed before. Like so, down, a little bump in it like so, and then it curves in a bit and then comes down in front of this wing which is there. Now, so I'm going to put that in, it comes around and down and goes back that way. Now we have this section here which comes up and over the back like so, and then I can bring the thickness of this down in here, so now that tells me my head has got to go up a little bit more than I had it. So I'm going to bring that up to there, this up to here. A little bit thick line for that. I don't need that much to be in there. Take that off. Come out. You can see this poor old brush. It hasn't had much use, but my lord, have I caned it. Um, right. Uh, da, 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 da. So let's go back up in here with the head again, higher than I had it before. And a little bit more fluid on that uh, umber and let that move a little easier. Just put my eye in, suggest my eye for a moment and just come down there and looking at where things are. So there is the front there. So if I put a line from there to there and looking at it, it's just about the edge of the throat. So I'm going to put that in there like so. And this will be the longest part of the painting, getting this drawing right. It's the same as when we did the um, watercolour version on uh, last Friday. So we will take our time today and get this about where we need it to be, like so. And... I want to bring that down. I'm looking at sort of light coming like that. Nice deep here and out through the back there. Again, I might change it, but for the moment I'm going to leave well alone and just go with it. My drawing is a lot more fluid than the watercolour because of the watercolour was made uh, you know, a pencil sketch and I had to um, get that about right without making too much of flighty mess all over the place with paint uh, with pencil and creating so now that is way off come back in and redraw it and look at that again let's bring that down through there that comes down and the leg is sort of coming down through here. It's about here. I had it a little bit too far off. So let's just put that in like so. And we come out 
to that lovely uh, elbow knee on these birds and then we get that short bit through there let's have a look at that in a minute we've got the bit that comes under here a uh, bit of the rump as it's coming around and we come back again we're looking at this tail flight which has got that lovely wedge shape to it and we've got the knuckle on this leg which is they look a little bit knock kneed if you look at they sort of go out a little bit so that one actually needs to come away and down and that way but more that way and then we get that little semi sort of knock kneed look to the foot starts to sort of come in a little bit and the same on this one and it comes down like so all right so far so good james good evening uh yes late i hope that's a good reason like building sheds and stuff that you're late i'm sure that is the reason in which case the excuse is plausible and acceptable we're going to move on before I get something said to me that I don't want. <laughs> um, okay, good evening, James. Oh, by the way, just going to put that flight feather in through there. Going to look at redrawing a couple of these marks here. And the little uh, top feathers. And there's a nice little dark shadow down through there. Now, I'm not too sure about this at the moment. I'm still looking at the head and i want to bring that down through there and i want that to come up a little way and out and that comes way out to there and then curves down out once more and fills up nicely down in there so i'm going to leave that like that smudgy horrible color but that will be that part of the bird, I hope. A little bit of a shadow down through there. And then we can use the shadow, just scratch that in through there. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, let's go back up and look at this head. I'm quite happy with it. I'm still looking at the dimensions, the length. Pins, of course, where you take it from. I'm trying to get a sort of fairly good representation. So if I take that through to there, it still looks about right. I still think we're right on the money for that. And um, just take that up through there and take that down. And we've got a lovely little bit of light, which we're going to work with later on. I think that is about right there. I'm just double checking some of the proportions. Like so. We don't see the other flight, um, but it is there nonetheless. All right, and let's put this eye back in properly now. Let's just put that in through there. And we'll come down and we'll look at the beak, which I'm going to sort of put there, just looking at where it starts there. It comes in front of there, just about a little bit there. And a nice curve to that section. And then up into the head. And over the back. I think that it needs to be wider here. And this, I'm just not quite comfortable enough with the way this is looking. So I'm just going to draw a bit more. Take that out a bit wider there. Constant check and compromise, change, check, compromise, and not compromise, but adjust more than compromise. Um, and just see where you need to change stuff. So I think we're sort of a little bit closer to it now. Um, a little bit on the eye there, just moved it forward a tad. Just about 
there. I'm going to wipe that off. I want to come around with a more lineal representation of the eye, which will make it a little bit easier for me to put the colour in instead of a dirty, great big dark blob. I'm destroying my drawing under here because I am actually um, using my hand to rest on, which is not the best. But hopefully that will give us the top of the beak. That will come down like so, a little bit too extreme. A nice little curve under there. Like so. And take that back over and through to about there. Doesn't look right at the moment, but hopefully by the time we finished it might. If I, I did sacrifice two goats to the gods earlier, and actually I just hedged my bets and added a chicken as well. Um, just in case that they were be easily appeased. And hopefully we get it right. So I will adjust some of this in here, take some of that out. And um, John, good evening. Glad you could make it. Um, glad you're there. And good evening to you. I'm just checking the drawing and keep adjusting little bits and pieces before I move forward. Okay. It may be that I really changed something quite radical, but I just want to see where we need to go with this. In a little bit more there, I think. Just take some of that out. All being done with umber, which is my standard way of drawing. A little bit up there. Let that come in. I'm starting to refine the drawing a little bit more as we go forward and hopefully that comes down and around and down in there to the tummy I've got more paint on my wrist and arm than anywhere else but I can still see pretty much where I'm going with this uh, drawing in umber is that a problem when you get to put the highlights in not necessarily it's say too much and you've been seeing me taking the lines down you know in the same way i reduce the amount of lead in certain places on the watercolor version well it's very much the same thing i'm just taking off some of the uh umber where i don't want it and it uh, you'll be surprised how umber gets absolutely lost in the grand scheme of things further into the painting um, it, you know, you think it would cast it, and of course it will have some effect, there's no doubt about that, but it will have much less an effect than you actually anticipate. So hopefully we are pretty much in a way, I've gone and lost that completely, that tail feather, I've robbed that right off. I'm going to put that back in there and suggest that down there like so. Okay, um final checks and I think I'm pretty much set to continue I say he says hopefully and that down and that comes in there like so okay right sorry uh, so my eye um, been a few live streams today may had big issues ah oh, it's not just yourself frustrating nonetheless oh well I'm sorry for them John um, that's not nice that people are um, having issues I uh, hopefully ours are for the better part behind us so I think our drawing of the goal is okay we are pretty much there I don't know how far it differs from the original but I'm just going to come in here and just come out on the picture a little bit so I can see the overall picture that's better and I'm going to put in some of these shapes. Now, again, I'm not overly worried that I get exactly the same shape of rock. Although, you could go to St. Moore's uh, outside of my gallery, uh, along you know, the Waterside Gallery, and you could see this rock at a certain time of the day, uh, at a certain time or height of the tide. 
um, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really make a lot of odds. It may be that I've made this whole thing a bit bigger in the picture plane than the last one. I'm not worried about that either. It is what it is, and uh, we will create our painting based on what we've got drawn up here. There's always something that can be changed and you know you can always make something a little bit different but I'm just sketching in pretty much how I want the um, rocks to roughly go and this one will be a case unlike the watercolor of course of putting all our darks in to begin with so I'm going to come in and I'm going to start laying in some of these dark areas of the rock now warms and cools I've got some um, umber with some red in I've got some umber with some ultramarine in so that the two of them will give me lights and darks or warms and cool darks as it were as I move forward with this work There's one or two taps here just try and get this area sort of mapped in as quickly as possible and uh, some more solid lumps and look how they come down towards the bird um, almost touching it not quite and a large corner section of the rock out of the water there and that sort of joins over well, a little dip down something like that and I'm just plotting that I'm not actually trying to commit to it and more around here we got some darks up in here which I will probably regret putting in at the moment but because I'll probably rest my arm sleeve and everything else into that but it's will do it nonetheless and that will be our shape of our rock there and then we got um, let's just come down and finish drawing the feet which I actually never did so let's just put that elbow in there and let's bring that down through here and then we've got the splay of the back of the feet there like so and on this one here something like that and then we have our little bits of rock going off into the water it's quite shallow it's standing on that little bit as a little ledge we are put in there and that can come on down through here and they've got that little bit of darkish rock and then we've got water that comes between the two and then of course I did change this last time but I'm just going to leave that like so and just suggest our lovely um, beginning of our reflection like so and we'll take that from there and then let's just come back in and carry on with the rocks that are coming around this rock continues on we're going to use that dark there to suggest the edge of the body and we're going to use this one again to come in tight on that neck and so we can get away with some lovely highlights working on that and we'll bring that light through here and it's got a little bit watery I'm going to take that off that could cause me a problem so the thing about painting and drawing and sketching like this in oil is and some of you who are sort of regular students of mine will know that I say that you should keep the um, paint what I call dry uh, and when I say dry I mean as close to working it out of the tube as you can without adding any other medium or thinners to it to make it move certain substrates like the um, one that I showed you just now will suck the life out of your paint so you're going to have to add more stuff to make that move but something like this and on a warm day the paint normally will just stay or become a little too thin maybe so you know you just the, the drier you can use the mix uh, like this then the better it will be for you because you can have more control over the paint moving forward if you get too much water with it then it will cause you no end of grief um, before you finish so with that said and done we'll carry on and try and keep it as dry brush as possible and a lovely area down here is a little rock in there but there's quite a large piece of chunk that's sticking out of the water at this point we are just going to bosh it in bash it in 
and just let that sort of sit there take that towards the edge of the canvas and another bit in front here which is underneath that it's like a plate and so this is, comes down very dark in here joins to this piece down here and then you've got a darker almost platelet type thing it's almost like a, a shard a shard that's been softened in the water over many many hundreds of years or much longer than that of course I'm sure but that gives us the idea and then of course we mustn't forget our lovely shadow that we will put in towards the end so that's quite a nice little looking rock and quite easy to draw in the oil paint um, and of course you've got to do a lot of the pale work on this and the water in watercolour before you start getting into some of these ducks so um, it is the reverse but it is a lot of fun uh, do you use gesso on the board before painting an oil? Absolutely, every time. Um, you need to do that, John, because there are certain acid traits in timber, and timber, especially composite timbers, uh, that will destroy, the, the um, or be destroyed, because there's a lot of um, sort of stuff in oil paint that will also destroy things. So the gesso acts as a barrier between the two and keeps the uh, happiness going on for many years between the two items otherwise you would end up with all sorts of problems okay i'm going to come in now with some yellow and some zinc white just to take that down quite a yellow color at the moment but i'm letting some of that blue and that umber come into it and kill it off i just want to suggest a medium tone to this rock here and just literally bashing in and blocking in all these little areas that are paler than the very dark just coming in there with a couple of marks too uh, Jim good evening that's no, alright mate no problems glad you've joined us we are up to 18 and uh, hopefully climbing now I'm going to suggest a couple of little patches of that color in here but there's not much of it to be seen it actually turns very very cool uh, with the sky colors very quickly but I'm just going to actually play around just tap a few bits in as it comes off into the water I'm leaning out a shot a little bit so I can see the lights are sort of not helping at all tonight with this vast canvas and of course the texture on the canvas isn't helping that much either I put in a little bit of other color to be seen on this rock as it goes off into the water too like so and one or two on here and certainly one or two up in here on this part of the rock here up around the back of the neck just there just literally just touching a few places not more it can alter and I can add so many more values of color onto that moving forward so we will come across here and we will bring some of this little dark area comes around and into the side here and again you can see i am really taking care to keep my value colors nice and dry i hate if i can help it using too much uh, medium as i paint sometimes you don't have a choice and sometimes the paint uh, the dictates of the paint or the painting you're doing uh, when you use certain mediums require an awful lot of medium but that is a very different style of painting to this so while we're doing this of course we will try and keep it as dry as we can I hope he says all right so I'm pretty much done there I'm just going to come and change the brush to that other little one that I was using just now there we are and I kind of come back in with an umber I actually have some black on here I don't normally advocate it in fact I'm going to not I'm going to use the blue and I want to suggest in the tail flight here very very dark very very quickly now you know when we did the watercolor I had to leave the little white bits I could have done the same thing now it would have been it would have meant applying them later would have been a little easier but I'm just being a little lazy I suppose and I'm just coming in with the dark which will be the flight feathers that we can see on this bird 
like so. All right, and just leave that to set up like that. I'm not going to do too much more now. Now I'm going to start looking at the larger area of the water. And I will come in, the, the traditional thing would be to come in dark and then light. Well, with this, we've got a predominance of light coloring. So I'm going to come back in with a fairly bluish color and then go over with the lighter colors, but I'm going to tweak it with the darker accents that are in the ripples of the water. So with that, and just put that up there. So let's make up a nice big mix. So I'm going to come in with some of the, and I am now going to, my white paint is very stiff. Wendy, I think you had the same problem. Uh, my white is quite stiff out of the tube. So I'm having to add a little bit of uh, um, uh, liquid to it. Sorry, I just lost it for a minute. And I'm going to put in a little bit of blue, a little bit of cobalt blue. Um, and just going to come in with a general overall color um, of my water. And it is quite pale, but it does need to be a bit bluer. Got a bit of phthalo, put that in. And a little bit more cobalt, put that through. See how that looks. It's, it looks a little bit heavy to me, so I'm going to use a bit of red. Now this red, actually not all of you will have. It's a natural red. It's a little bit more warmer than cadmium red light. So I think that's probably closer to the blue that I'm probably looking for at this stage. So I'm going to bring that in and just play around. Now, I find miss pieces, I'm not going to worry about it. Really am not, because this is going to have other value colors over and above what I'm putting on now. I'm just putting this on to give myself a covering and a base of, to which I can work on and bring the rest out. Now I'm going to be careful to come around some of these sharper areas and take the color way off to the top into here and it dips down there we've said but it also dips down in here so let's take that in nice to use the dagger brush and I want to make it a soft background in many respects there will be some hard edges but I'm not too worried if some of those areas remain hard or soft um, if you were standing there you probably see quite a hard edge but I quite like the softness and the reason I like the softness is that it means to say this doesn't draw your eye straight to it. Instead, you're drawn to the bird, which is a central subject. Um, so I'm quite happy to leave some of the edges of the rock. and move that paint stiffening up again. I'm going to move uh, edges to a softer look overall, if I can. And put that shape in there. And so when you drag in, you drag some of this light paint into it. But that's fine, it's not a problem. Now, I don't anticipate tonight being too short. Um, yeah, I think we did get the same batch of white, I'm sure. Been going 30 minutes so far. Oh dear. Well, you may have to ask for an extension tonight, Luke, to stay with it, because uh, the watercolor version took two and a half hours. I don't see this one if I'm honest with anybody, being any quicker at all, and possibly even a little longer. But again, it's everyone's choice whether they stay with it or <laughs> just let me talk to myself at the end. <laughs> I don't mind. I really don't mind. Okay, so let's just come back in here and um, keep going with these color values around. Do you want to get that? I'm going to have to shorten that rock a little bit. I don't want it getting too close to the edge. I want to give it a little bit of room for that to uh, stay within the, the confines, as it were. And take that up there a little bit and bring that down to there. Draw that in and bring that down to the edge of the flight through there. And I'm making all my edges quite soft. And that will go into there and under there. That's it, and take that down to that point. Drag that into our foot, let that run down the side. And the same at the front here. Let's take that into the edge of the bird. And we have got a bit of dark coming in, so I will just, there's a little 
underwatery bit we can just see a little darkness still coming out through here so I'm going to allow that to be like so soften that into there and suggest it and we can play around with that in a little while I have just tapped my brush straight into my lovely blue but it's not enough to worry it I don't think now we're going to bring this light under here which will give us a nice sense of um, counter change as we come down the darkness of the chest or the tummy coming down into the tummy and the leg will look nice against the lovely blues of the water underneath so I'm going to bring that through like so and that comes off and up to something like that now we come round that knee joint and into there onto this one bring that through like so and we're just literally using the negative space to draw what is needed for the legs of this bird the dark goes off up there so I'm just going to drag that with my finger into there not a problem so I'm going to stay as soft as that but uh, at least you get the idea of where I want some of these marks to be bring that down through here like so okay now we're cooking I hope and a little bit more blues coming in a little bit more of the thalo blue and I did tap a little bit of natural red to the bottom of it we'll put some of that back in too and I've just done something to my screen get away there you go get that out of the way and just bring this all the way across here now let's fill in this big void of water which we will make something of but I just want to get it knocked into shape color wise if some of the blue or the you can see how this looked quite gray when we started but it is against this cooler blue you can see just how warm the um, base color that I applied is it's quite a warm value of grey so it's quite nice actually I quite like it just going to come under the chin here just to isolate that side there with some nice light into the beak underneath the bird because that will give me another case of counter change which we will uh, seize upon and make use of I'm going to take that through there and up to the top there and take that around I seem to have, what's that? No, me. The minute I'm just losing it. Right, I'm going to take that off up into this rock too. And you can start to see that there is uh, a little bit of colour under the water in this water and around the rocks as I drag that material all the way through there. Can I come down here now? Just get this area knocked in as well. A bit of more laborious job. This is getting these this water bashed into place. But the sooner I can do that, then the sooner we can start doing more essential work um, with this. I'm going to change a little bit of lighter value here. Just took it away from the blue a little bit. We're going to come back in with some more yellows. I'm going to take that up to there. Take that all the way across and into that rock. All right, so just dragging some of that material out of the way. And so you're not quite sure where it's dark and where it's light, where it starts and stops, as it were. And then down here, we've got to finish this off. Okay, and last part down through here. Got a little bit too much white picked up with that, so I'm going to come back in with a bit more blue. And actually it's quite bluish anyway, so I'm going to use some of that. Come back in here, come into that shape there. Because that's really our reflection, so this is all water down in here. I'm going to roll my sleeve up because I'm getting very close to wrecking another shirt. Um, it seems that every time I do an oil painting, even whether it's on live stream or not, I tend to sort of wreck the garments that I'm wearing. Um, and the trouble is to wear heavier protective stuff. It's just too hot at the moment. 
or has been too hot anyway. Right, I'm just going to come over this area here just a little bit. We can see where we want it to be, but we cannot have to worry too much about it. Like so, I'll just bring that. That's a piece of rock there. So I'm going to take the water around like so. Then I'm going to come back in with this beigey shape, which we were using before. A little bit of yellow in there. A little bit of the... Um, red from the Indian red or uh, yeah the Indian red and let's come back in and put that in through there which is a nice bit of rock shape and there's quite a bit of warmth up into this rock shape too and leave it like that for the moment and we can actually put some of that into here to give that another value variation of color and it gets a little bit paler maybe a little yellower down through here Dragging that material everywhere and allowing it to sort of pick up and move and scratch and, and miss bits and all sorts of things. So we can actually suggest this rock. There's a little bit of room to do that tonight. We didn't have that value last time, so I'm going to bring this in to play and leave little bits of blue, which suggests the bit of water that's still laying in some of the little fissures. Um, these create lovely little watery ponds all over the place on this foreshore where the waters come down and sits in a lovely little rock pool um, of which there are many right i need a little glug uh, time is cracking on i do apologize everybody we are severely delayed at the moment in terms of time we're coming up to 46 minutes so bear with me. Right, while this is setting itself up a little bit and I'm looking at it and just checking a few values, I want to come in with essentially the darker parts of my bird. So to that, I am going to use some umber. Funny choice when we want a grey, but we're going to add to the blues. We're going to put a little bit of cobalt and a little bit of the uh, ultramarine blue in. I'm going to tap in just a smidge of the Indian red we're just going to look at that dark color. Is it where we want it to be? I think it needs a little bit of naphthol red to it. And that turns it to a sort of pinkish, warmish gray. And I think that's probably closer to the color we see. And I think it is. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to put that on as a base color to the wing. By keeping this color over here a little bit more, I can come back into it and reuse it and I can go in darker with it or lighter as I feel the need to further on. Now those of you who have all watched what I'm doing in the past painting wise know that I paint fairly very thinly. I don't paint very heavy impasto marks in my paintings at all. It's just not my way um, and each to their own um, as I say. Right I'm just going to I want to keep this fairly fairly fresh and i'm going to bring that up to there and just come around with that now down and down like so and it's got a nice big drop to it nice big sort of curvature on the base just here before it turns back up and into the next set of flight feathers okay so that's that part in now we're going to come across and I'm going to add a little bit more of the red, but a little tap of the orange that's sitting there, a little tap of yellow just on the side, makes that very warm color. I'm going to come in with some white and it's now a pinkish color. So now I'm going to add a little bit of my blues just to start turning it and a little bit more just like cooking with salt. You just add until you're happy that you've got about the right value. And let's just come in with the base here of the neck and just going to check where that is in terms of color. I come back in with some of this and pick up through the center there. And it may even be a bit more up into here. Okay. I feel that the paint is a little bit too fluid. I'm just going to leave that bigger brush there, come back with a smaller um, dagger, 
it's a very fine small dagger. They sent it to me by, by mistake, but it's um, what is it? It's a uh, one eighth. I've never seen one that small, but hey ho, it's good. We'll use it. A little bit of blue and a little bit of red to dirty up the purple. And then we're going to add white to that. And we're going to take that where we need it to be in terms of the neck color. So we're going to put in this color in the neck here, this darker side. And I'm going to bring that down, create the shape, and stick with it. So just look at our drawing and take that across there and I've got to be a bit careful because I don't want to rest on any paint so I'm using my little finger as a, a little pointy rest as it were and I've got to take that now all the way up to the top of the head here across the back there let it come under the eye up to the eye like that down through the front back up to the eye there and then top of the beak and then a little bit of muscle shape there underneath and then of course we've got the throat which is nice and long bring that into there and then we've got this shape in here which I've absolutely got to create a nice shape to because there is the little bit of light below it so I'm going to put that into there all right, now that looks quite sooty and quite dusky, quite dark in tone, and it is, but we will change that. Hi, Shemaine, good of you to join us. Thank you very much. Uh, we are slowly climbing up. We've got 20 now. We, I think we had 26 in total last time. When I looked at the stats afterwards, I think some have come in and gone, but I think there were 26 unique um, uh, URL, whatever they call, whatever it is that uh, you know your addresses different you are different addresses I think that's what it is right, I'm going to warm up some of these values here in the gull just lighten them up a little bit more than they were because now I've got them in I can see the colors and I can see where I need to change things and uh, put in a little lighter value to any part of it at all I'm just going to take that and lighten that up to a warmer color through here and down the back here okay and that's going to get a little bit more cobalt to it as we come across here a little bit bluer under that and that actually gets a little redder on the back end of this part just in here Okay, it's still very much suck it and see and see where you're going to go with it. I put in a little bit more, not that much there. <laughs> a little bit more white, but not that much. Come on, let's just lighten that up a little bit too far. Let's wipe some of that off my finger and bring that down through here and come across with that through under here and down there. Okay, and the same up here. We need a little paler. We're going to use something that's a little closer to the watercolor, and put that in through like so. A lot of blend in because this is um, very subtle changes in color. We don't want to overpower any particular part. And I can see mine is sort of looking very much darker. At the moment so i'm going to have to probably bring all these values up a little bit um, when i look at what i've got in front of me and what you're seeing i think there is some uh, need for bringing up some of these values so i'm going to actually start to do that i'm going to bring up some of the lights in here and up in here just bring up these values more right so then we're going to lighten this shift across here somewhat to and 
definitely through here. I think it's just a tad too much. And take that in and take that down. And I want to put a bit of pink. I want to put a natural red color on a lovely little pink. Pinky orange then. <laughs> Pinky orange, not pink. Just putting that into the back there. gives that a nice warmth to it. Maybe a little down in here. Not much. Okay, we'll leave it at that for the moment. I think we somewhat brought it up. And I think when we put the highlights in, that will make the ultimate difference. Um, concurrent users. Yes, concurrent users. That's the word. That's what I'm looking at. It says 20. Um, and we are... 20 on in the chat on my iPad so perhaps they are the same thing Ben if I would I be right in saying that I think so I'm gonna put in a little bit of base yellow just for the start to suggest the um, beak we will we had a bit of trouble with this last time but hopefully we won't have the same problems tonight that I had I'm just gonna leave that like that just as a setup and I want to come in with this mid gray value, a little bit warmer to it, and put that value in over the back. Let's have more blue to it than I actually allowed for. Oh no, not that much blue, come on. Must have picked up a lump in the brush I didn't see. So we get rid of that, it's not a big problem. Alright, that can come down into here, like so. And a little bit more of that blue on over here as well. A little bit of dark, or darker, a bit more bluer. Trying to keep the blends about right. I'm just going to suggest that dark through there. And dark down that side, which we lost a little bit of. Okay. I'm going to start playing around with the colours in here now. We put the initial one on and we're going to start making some variations into that. And we've got the secondary flights which are going to indicate with just brush marks. And then we've got these ones around here which are going to gain, suggest with some brush marks. I'm not going to try and paint individual feathers in. I don't do that. Got that little dark area there of one of the feathers. These ones coming down into here. They're slightly warmer. And there will be a bit more light to go back in on them further in. Let's come in with this dark under here. Quite a bit darker than I'm putting in. Just make a new mix up just slightly. We can change anything later. But let's just get that in now. Let's just say where we want that dark to end up, roughly. Coming under here, into that leg, and then it starts to come up through to the here. Like that. Okay. Put a bit more value into that. And there's a lot of light into there, so we're going to leave that alone for the moment. Because what I need to start doing is looking at the um, edges and the contrast between that and the rocks bes uh, beside them. So let's just come back in and start drawing in some of these rock forms. P 
picked up a lovely lump of green there which I didn't plan on doing I'm going to use some Indian red and some blues to muck about with this um, okay they're the same Ben thanks ever so much mate so where I've been looking for watchers all this time I've actually it's been staring me in the face so we've got that sorted out that's good thank you right I'm using mixes now primi primarily of ultramarine blue and uh, oxide of red which if you don't use oxide of red your nearest component will be burnt, burnt sienna uh, it's, oxide of red is very much the same thing it's just a little bit more transparent than the sienna so either will do the job very very nicely let's come around here and we can isolate the shape of that bird in there now that's just thrown something up that's quite obvious to me that this needs to come out on this shoulder a lot more than I've allowed. So I'm going to bring that out right now, like so, and that thing can come down, dips in, and back out again there. I think that's about right. It just, as soon as I put that dark mark in, it stood out. I'll change that. I can always come back into it if I'm not, if I still don't think it's right, but I think that's probably closer. And then we're going to bring that into there. Uh, I'm putting a lot of dark in here. It doesn't matter. We can always come over with lights. And I'm going to bring up the dark up through there. It does slope into that shoulder. But not quite as steeply. There's a little, little lip there. A little, little um, sort of point, as it were. It goes into a very slight point. Okay. And that gets quite bluish up through this part so I'm going to put a little bit more blue to that mix here and just take that to there and leave it up there for the moment um, pardon Judy this is not a selling platform <laughs> oh Judy 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 what we're going to do with you I don't know. It's good to see you here anyway. That's the main thing. So there's no charge for this. So you don't have to sell your home just to watch me on here. Um, that's, that's absolutely fine. Just going to straighten that up there. One or two marks just to start drawing the shapes into this now and some of the little fine marks and points that we've got going on with these rock faces and the facets and little bits of here, little bits of there. Just trying to get those in place now. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking at what Jude is up to with her house on the chat. <laughs> oh, dear. Never a great time, is it, Judy, to try and sell one's house? No one seems to want to do very much at all in these times of lockdown, although it is, I'm told, better to do right now. Um, things are easing off a little bit. I know we're selling my father's house right now. We're almost at the end of it. But these last few bits and pieces, uh, it's just taken an eternity to, to finish off. Right, I'm just going to come down here. There are some more ebbs and colours to come into that. I do want to sort of start making some real strong statements with these rocks. And, um, yeah, just make them turn where I want them to. I don't want that so tight up to the bird. I'll take a bit of that away. In fact, I'm going to actually make it come up this way a little bit more had the problem of that fading out to grey there because of what I've done but actually I'm very lucky that at this point here there is a very light facet so we can actually run that colour out into the sea as it were what was the sea colour and let that become that lighter facet of that part of the rock but then I can come back in with a very similar value the other side here and come up over the top of the bird's head still wants to be fairly dark to make the head really shine when I put the light highlights on but I'm just going to come in with a darker value now carefully going around the form of the head and I don't want it to look as though I've just gone around it in that fashion 
So we'll make some color changes and sweeps with marks with the brush that will get rid of anything like that and just take it off into sort of areas like that so it just loses out to everything as it were. Can I use some of these colors? Not bad color actually for putting in some of the ripples in the water and we can use this brush as well. Ideal for the job because you can turn and twist it and create these lovely ripples in as much a way as I could do with a nice um, soft uh, long filbert which I've got here in my other hand just for the job and just coming up in here with some of these cooler bluey lights of wet rock in here and coming around into the back end of the neck here which as this comes around gets darker here but we are quite happy to make this getting a bit lighter as it comes around the back of the head and starts to darken up down the back of the bird's head like so but if I look at it and I look hard I can still see that this area of the rock is still somewhat darker giving me that nice separation between the head and the rock in the this and the behind it I'm going to utilize that I didn't want to do that I'm going to come in I'm going to use that darkness and then let that run up in little fissures up into that rock like so there we go that works now then one thing I can do I clean my brush out thoroughly and I'm going to come in and I'm going to actually put in that very yellowish not too yellow I don't want it looking like um, something awful like too much yellow on it so I'm just going to lay in this dark this light dark oh, I'm gonna come in and I just want to put in the suggestion of that light to give me a very clear definition of value between the gray and the light of the bird at this point it may not be how it remains but it certainly is a start to give me an idea of where I want the lights to come down I can add to that later but it just gives me as I say I'm going to leave that little puddle of color there I will come back to that as and when I need to there's a light to come in there too and one or two other places um, mm, yes of course badges at your place isn't there right let's look at some of these sort of warmer ripples in the water just play around with some of these colors they are pick at these ripples are actually what you're doing is you're seeing through the water to those ripples because they are actually dirtier values of the rock underneath the surface of the water so it's almost that you the lighter blues are reflective upwards of the sky and the darker dirtier cooler brownier ripples that I'm showing you now uh, where the water is turned where you're almost you're looking through the water uh, the rock underneath I think I'm right in saying that and I'm sure you can correct me if I'm talking a load of tosh <laughs> but I think I'm right I'm going to take this one off through here is like a little bubbling going on and it's sort of just underneath the surface trailing out from this piece here a little dark in one or two other areas just catching it like so um, oh I've tapped something again get away right um, we're up to 22 which is good um, so kind of age some of these little areas of light I'm just going to put a little darker edge it's very suggestive that you're getting a secondary value around the edge of the water and just little fix this little brushes actually I have to get some more of these ones because they just have that little flick these are the ivory versions slightly stiffer bristle but they actually work well for just coming through and then whipping the brush a little bit you know, I'm going to show you more of it down here I'm going to put in a lighter 
maybe a slightly warmer brownish color into some of these surfaces like something like that okay hopefully that will work if it doesn't I'm going to look a bit silly um, and one or two in here just mixing up some of the blues and some of the other colors coming especially up to here onto the neck and maybe one or two a little darker a little grayer up to that point like that and they actually sort of mess up a little bit in here you can't quite see where one bit starts and stops the water is sort of churning at this point and there are some darker ones now if I come in here and I can sort of do this same thing as I was doing in here just mess it up a little bit and it looks like you get that secondary little line around the edge of some of these wonderful little ripply strokes in the water I don't know what it would be called, I have no name for it, but I know what I mean um, and hopefully you can get from what I'm saying, what I'm on about. Okay, that come a little dark towards the beak, but I actually did need that. Uh, or do I? Actually, I don't think I do. You know, I think I can actually take this line out a bit here. So I'm going to come in with some uh, of the bluish colour through here, this water. Take that down like that. Okay, Judy, I hope you're sort of on the case because you're my official beat watcher outer um, tonight. So you need to take your mind off your house selling and concentrate on my beak. And not quite literally. <laughs> take that little arc under there. We're going to maybe shape some of that up a little bit further in. And I think that needs to come down a little bit there. And one or two little taps in here, little bits of light, like so. And there's quite a yellowish mark. I'm going to put some cad yellow light into that mix. And I'm just going to put one or two lighter values of yellow coming through there. I want to make them even paler than that. So I'm actually going to use what was the highlight of the bird. I'm going to come in with one or two lighter streaks of yellow. And I don't know what's causing that. There is something about that's causing that bit of light. But it, as you can see, dirt is very, very quickly. So I'm going to come back in again. quite an ambitious size of painting to do in the time allotted so um, I've not sort of tried to do one this large for a, an audience online before ever um, well you're the only guys that I actually stream for at the moment but you get the idea you know the sort of sizes that I do is no normally not bigger than uh, 12 by 10 so this is quite a lot larger than that and I don't mind that I, just, I give anything a go if it works fantastic I'm just going to come in with a few lighter values into this white here which I quite like what that's doing and there are one or two which I'm going to ride in on some of these it helps show the movement of the water like so there's a lot coming in down here A little bit more of the yellow coming into it. And like that. A little bit round here. Take some more white off, a little tap more yellow. It's using quite a bit up. I'm going to come down with a lot lighter values of yellowish down the side of this rock here and bring that out through. And I can use that then into the ripple, uh, the reflection, sorry. And there's a little dancing around of some of the lighter colours, darker colours through here. 
and one or two out through the back here and skipping it off out through here it's just a variation now I did say earlier that there's quite a bit of yellow showing up I wanted to bring some of that into this painting and it gives a variation to the blue values as well so they work with each other in that way and I want to use them for that very reason I'm going to come in here I'm tempted but I'm not going to I'm tempted to put a bit more blue value in here there's some lights and some darks and I just want to bring some of that in like so and come back into some of these yellows that are coming through take it straight through the leg that doesn't matter we can come back over that leg so it's nothing's lost one or two taps one or two bits of nice fresh movement with the brush just depositing a little bit of paint color here and there just to mix it up a little bit I'm shifting around in my chair a little bit I do apologize. I can't actually see where I'm looking because I've got my head cam covered up um, in terms of what I can see I know what you can see but I can't see the same thing right now I put in a lot more I didn't want to really put that there but I've done it now so we'll live with that just one or two areas coming down this way with the water and one or two up the back here just to finish up through the back and up into this top a few finer marks a few thinner marks may need to put in a little bit more um, liquid and a bit more yellow not too much that's going a bit too much because we've got a very pale blue up the top end so it can easily become that this becomes a lot darker than that you're trying to put in so just be aware of that just keep it nice and light just little gentle taps through beautiful bay beautiful seas around Cornwall um, and I sort of plan on doing a heck of a lot more painting there over the coming years and certainly um, as soon as this lockdown eases one of my trips will be down there I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to do that this year I really like the idea of being able to do that but I'm unsure of what the future lies not only for the gallery but for teaching physically and also for getting out and painting and going sort of stay in places okay getting out locally and doing a little bit of work but it would be really nice to be able to um, you know get in a car and go down to a little bit not a and b as such but a little cottage somewhere rent it for a couple of weeks and just paint like a demon for that time come home sell those pieces take a lot of reference and uh, carry on painting love it okay it was going to be one of my jobs this year to do and go down there but uh, as I say things have changed in that direction quite a bit so not going to happen straight away so it's going to move some of these around just play around with some of these and the thing is that when I paint um, I'm constantly looking at ways of trying and push even what I do. What I tell you is based on what I know and what I've done for years and one thing or another. But at the same time, I always try and change a stroke, vary something so that I get a different mark or uh, I do something that changes the whole look of something. It doesn't always come off, but I just like the idea of pushing uh, what I do and... Um, yeah, hopefully that will come out in the paintings that I create. It doesn't always. Sometimes it just doesn't work at all. But I think that you you live uh, as a painter by questioning everything you do and what you did the last time and how you can alter for the next time and, yeah, just make something a little different. And, John, you, you know, you teach painting, I know, and, you know, 
you have this cell the same principle I'm sure that even if you're doing your own work that you are sort of questioning what you're doing trying to push it anyway that's enough of that <laughs> before I get too deep into a conversation so I'm going to put in a little bit of ripple in through this here maybe a little lighter into some of these areas here that's suggesting that there is a bit of water laying in the trough of this rock right now yeah, well that will be one of the places because I, last time I went to Port Levin Wendy I stood I, I was in a tent first time I've been camping in a tent for a long time and a friend well, actually two or three friends lent me bits of kit because I had nothing at the time very kindly and honestly I've never spent five worse nights in my life than in this tent no it's a great tent it's a great kit but uh, no I'd rather have um, a comfortable bed at my age I think and enjoy the luxuries of that as opposed to uh, waking up with dripping canvases and all sorts of horrible things like that. Can I change this to a little lighter blue there? Tap it away. And the same, the lovely little pale blue coming down this part of the back of the neck. Now I'm starting to refine all my shapes and forms. Looking at everything we've done so far and looking and saying I need to do this, I need to make that lighter, I need to change and vary that mark just slightly and all the time I'm judging everything. But yes, uh, Wendy, I'll have that address most certainly if I may and I'm going to come in with that same bluish colour and it's going to be more phthalo blue. I'm going to take that off a little bit. It's a bit too heavy, that white. And come in with a bit of more phthalo. I know it's a little cooler in the bird itself. But I like the freshness that phthalo is giving me. Uh, yes, absolutely. Question everything. I'm unsure how school teaching is going to go. So never know, Paul. I may produce some paintings to sell. Well, I hope to do. I hope you do, John. I, I, you know, I, I feel that uh, as an art teacher, anyway, you ought to be producing your own work, and um, yeah, I think you should. I really do. But um, it's a difficult time for so many people. Just teasing some of that out a little bit. Just trying to fuse those areas a little bit more together as it comes down just gently tapping away and I'm going to come into the side of the mouth here just put that little light value in there start looking at the face a bit more Very much a lovely blue shade right over the top of the muscle structure on the mouth there, the jaw. And it's just as that rolls over, then it catches the light and gives you that lovely little uh, degree of light there, which is cool. And take a little bit more phthalo blue together and just play around with some of these. There's quite a bit of light under here, which I need to put in too. And that's going to be predominantly the phthalo and a little bit of the other colours that are kicking around there. Up to the eye, around that top part of the beak. Just be very, very careful. There's a little bit of muscle structure there, which I need to put in under the eye. And then that comes back up through there and tapers out. You always see this in a lot of birds. You get that lovely little shape of muscle round there. We can just lighten that up a little bit more into there. And take that up in a little slightly different angle. And they sort of start to merge and the values start to come together, which is great. Now I'm going to come in and I want to come in with 
that really bright light and I'm going to start it off with white and may add some yellows to that. I want to get it into place. I want to come down there with the edge and gently bring that down. It's going to corrupt into some of that brown so it will be almost a second pass needed to get that to look and work. So I'm going to put that in and we're just going to suggest that right the way through there at the moment. Softly, softly into there. Let that settle for a little bit and not settle as it needs to settle or dry. It's not going to do anything like that. But just let it sort of work on my head as it were and see where I need to go with it next. And this this white in mine is very, very um, stiff, Wendy. So um, I guess that we had a similar batch of white and it's caused us both, or is causing us both, just a little bit more trouble. Okay, I will get a, another tube out of the stock tomorrow. I'm down in the gallery tomorrow morning and I will just see if that is the, the same or whether or not it's better. And I will report back to you on that and let you know. Just a little shape above the eye. Just a gentle, gentle persuasion of the two edges to come together. Right. I need to put some of these lights into the top of this feather here. I'm going to start putting in just a little broad marks. A little bit more white. A bit more of the blue maybe. And just create a difference. But it's not as the same colours as it were up in here. So just want to tease that around and give some variances uh, the different sort of groups of feathering that are on the side of the bird. So I'm not making one solid colour. I'm varying the shape so that it suggests that there are many, many feathers folded into each other onto the wing as it lays flat and uh, comes down the side and goes in. And I think that works quite nice. You don't have to try and physically paint every feather into a bird, any bird, not just this any bird. I don't think there's the need to it. There are people out there that do it and they do it very very well and I'm not saying that you shouldn't I'm just simply saying you don't have to. I certainly don't choose to. I for one don't really have the patience. I know some people that will put individual feathers in. Not only will they do that, they will give that feather a shadow side and a highlight side and you know I just don't have that sort of patience and um I never would. So that's me. That's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. Um, and put in a little bit more of that violet mix. A little bit corrupt it a little bit there. More blue, but a dirty violet. And something like that. So I want to come back in here. I've lost a little bit of that dark. And I just want to tap that back in. Possibility it's a little too dark. Take some back out. But Put that little weight in through there. Okay. And um, I'm going to put some of that blue, well I've got it, right down in here. Just lost a little bit of the dark in there, so I'm going to put some of that back into that. And then a little bit through here on the secondaries. Taking that down and making that a little less obvious on that bit of light that's coming down there and giving that wing edge a bit of a darker mark. All about tonal shift. Take that down and down. Okay. One or two marks in here that suggest there is sort of feather and dark around here. Ah, gentlemen, there's a question for you all <laughs> who live near me. <laughs> Do any of you know how to fly drones? <laughs> Don't all rush, but if you do, make yourselves known to me. <laughs> I've just gone out and bought one. Oh dear. 
I do cause myself some problems. But I have bought a drone. And um, I think, James, you knew I was going to be buying a drone. I, get, I think we had a conversation. There's a lovely little well of water in there. I've just seen it. I'm going to give that a lovely little bluish value. Come back in with some white over the blue. Just give that a bit more importance. And again, there's some in here. I didn't realize that that sort of what that is and um, between there. So there's that lovely little well of water in both of those places, as well as a few trickles in here, which I'm going to actually add to now. And then leave that alone for a minute. Um, yes, I'll let you know about that white. Um, definitely. Uh, da, 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 da. What have I missed? No, I'm going to have a glug. I don't know what we're doing for time. Right. Now then, I've got a sneaky feeling that my head could be a little taller than I've given it. I think it's a little squat. And to combat the look of that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here with a bit of dark in here down there for the moment and then I'm going to thin it out. I'm going to come in here and add some darks into there. Take a little dark line down here. Something like that. Now it's not a total answer but it also means to say that I've got to change the shape of this wing a little bit here. Because this has got to come out and around just like so. Which means to say that my wing here has got to change its position just ever so slightly. Just in here like that. Okay, I'll live with that. I live with that, and we just come in with a little bit across the light across the top there. Nice curved top. Okay, a little bit grey out coming into that part. So this is actually a shadow that I've missed right now. So let's get that in. So we've got a shadow that comes down here. I'll put that in like so, a bit bluer, and let that come down into there. Comes down and around into that part there, and it comes into there. Now that then comes up a little bit tighter there. And drones, new hobby or for painting and resource. Um, actually, not a hobby at all, John. Um, it's uh, purely to get B roll to paint more plein air uh, films and give a lot more interest to any films that I make outside. That's the plan of it. Um, and I hope that it works. I don't know. I think that needs to come down a little bit. So I'm going to bring that down. Bring that shape there down. And um, bring that through there like that, I think. Which means then I can bring that here down there a bit more. Yeah, it's um, it's purely for B-roll, John. I want to be able to have a, a drone, even if it's for a short while, to uh, hover around the back a minute, and they will move around you. At least the one I've got does, and um, that allows me to do a, a modicum of painting, even if I pretend to be painting. Um, which I, you know, I hope that I don't just have to pretend to paint. I hopefully will be able to do some proper painting at that point and um, 
and then have the thing go up and down and view the scenery that I'm painting um, and give a, a lot more interest to and appeal to the work that I create and uh, I think it'd be a lot better as a new dimension and there's another thing about it and I, uh, this has got this can fly indoors John um, and um, it's got that many sensors that it shouldn't crash and because it's got follow me technology um, I'm hoping I don't know <laughs> it might be a whole load of bunkum but I'm hoping that I can actually get it to follow a train around my layout um, in the future once I know and understand a lot more about how it works but uh, yeah that's the that would be the plan is to have it follow a train not that's not the only plan sorry <laughs> I give, give you the wrong impression um, and I wouldn't tell my wife just that <laughs> she she's a very suspicious about it already but um, <laughs> But yeah, is to be able to um, actually just capture that B-roll, which I feel is uh, a very useful addition to my my painting videos uh, in time to come. And the more you do, uh, the better it will be. And I know drone pilots. I know a couple of. There's one I know in the train fraternity, um, and you know, the sort of been able to capture great train videos with it being in the, being aloft so yeah it's, it's just the way it is anyway right i digress but yes so if any of you know how to fly one out there and want to give a few lessons to a, a rank amateur to stop me plowing into the nearest tree or stoving it into the house or anything else then uh, make yourselves known let me know all right I digress. I'm just going to put in a little bit of stuff here that is bubbling around this lovely piece of rock. And I am using, I'm using both these, well, I'm actually just using this one little dagger. It's proving to be a really resourceful little brush. Um, and I quite like what it's delivering in terms of, um, you know, the movement and getting lots of things happening with it. I'm just coming in with might be a little bit too on the yellow, too on the warm side. Don't know, let's just see how that goes. That's not so bad. Just wanted a little bit more warmth into some of this bubbling. And um, yeah, there's a little dark I've got to put up around there and into there, which creates that tiny little fissure holding that little bucket of water as such. And there's that dark here, which is coming off. And again, there's an edge to that, and that's another little reservoir in there, which we'll put some dark into closer to time. And looking at, and we're losing people. People are disappearing. That's not on. I thought I told you to lock the gate, Ben, and stop them getting away. You assured me you had a good padlock. Right, just playing around with the edge of this. Warms and cools. Little nice color over the top of that. It goes into the edge of the bird and maybe just tap one or two. Now I can see there's sort of water coming in around the back, which I will try and replace and put that in. There's a whole mass of lights and darks over these rocks. Some of it is wet, some of it is colour, some of it is just damp, all sorts of things. Some of it is sort of covered in water where it's just been sort of just gone over the top on the last wave. So I'm not attempting to try and recreate every subtle nuance and change within this i just want to have the general feeling of what we've got going on here again we've got these lovely little facets in here and you've got light areas and you've got a little bit of um, dark running through them so it's very shallow laying in the rock or on the rock and a little bit through there coming around here just one or two bits coming off of there uh, good evening David nice of you to join us 
I hope there's more than sufficient time for me to mess this up or for you to enjoy something from it. <laughs> We're not there yet, so anything can happen in the next half hour. That's what they used to say, didn't they? Anything can happen in the next half hour. Probably will do as well. I'm just going to put in one or two paler values of water as I suggested will be going off over the back there. Lots of little variants of colour, but they are sort of subdued as they're going away, and even more so you can make them a lot lighter or darker, as the case may be. But this lovely little brush is allowing me to do so many uh, little tweaks and flicks, and yeah, it's really good. Thoroughly recommended. Um, you like that. Let's change one or two and you can run some lights back through some of these as well. If you look at the reference you can see sort of lights in yellows, darks around, something like that. And it just just plays around with the shapes. But there's no right or wrong to them because obviously they're changing from one millisecond to the next. They're constantly on the move and as the water ripples then the light catches the very next partial second as it were and you've got an absolutely different wave. Okay. The two dark bits coming into the edge of the rock there so they don't look as though they've just been cut out and stuck onto the canvas. They've got um, connection as well and we want to put that in. And of course there are some here that are actually coming away. Hopefully that's looking a bit convincing. I can't tell um, especially on this larger panel, I just really can't see too much of what's going on. So I'm having to hope that we are in the right ballpark with um, some of these marks and these shapes that I'm making. But again, it may be that in the cool light of day that I have a morning on it tomorrow if I feel the need and so disposed to do. Um, just have another go at it and play around with some of these shapes. Soften some, change some of the values, maybe. Or I may look at it and think, you know, I quite like where it's at and I don't really want to disturb it anymore. It works and we'll just leave it at that. A bit more water disturbed around here. There's a lot of bubbling going on, so I want to try and recreate a little bit of that if I can. The blue coming in and just bubble it around literally make it move churning as it's being forced around the edges of the rocks and what have you Straight around this part here some of it's quite warm so we're going to bring some of that color back in So it's a bit of having fun, isn't it? This is, you know, sort of all these lovely little marks. They're not like the photograph at all, but they are just using paint to suggest. And the mark making makes the whole thing fresh and interesting, and not laborious and, and boring, I hope, anyway. That's my thought on it. Um... Cheers, Wendy. I appreciate that. I can't see too much, but I, I get some of it. But, um, yeah, it's looking okay. Good. Right, I'm going to actually add some blues up in here. Some little soft marks I want to put in. But not that blue, I don't think. I just want to put in a little bit of naphthol and a little bit of cobalt together and bring that in through and put some of that lovely violet into some of these rock faces making them wet but 
sort of that violet really works with the reds and the blues of the sea and all these other colors so it just i think we get away with that quite nicely and just bring some of these lighter values up into here be careful of the bird itself some of the lights up into there a bit more white just take it back a little bit more certainly through here and bring some of that blue to meet it so then bring some of that blue color up in to meet that Right. Keep catching my monitor, my iPad, and it's sort of showing me doing strokes that I did about a minute or so ago. It's quite fun. It's quite off-putting in a way as well. And I'm just going to bring one or two marks in through here, up into the area around here, to let that run in. Just let the water dance around. Let the colours just mingle. And I am having a lot of trouble with this white. Got to be said, definitely very stiff. And Wendy, did you actually put some um, linseed to yours? It should have worked. I just wonder if you actually did it or not in the end. I put one or two taps of colours in through here. Come in and meeting some of this in the head down here which is nice because it's going to be a little bit lighter than the head at that point so we get more of this um, contrast going on between light and dark on both the subject and the background bring that color right in there big blast of lights and darks coming in through there and let that come into there and disappear and like so again um, right, I'm going to start looking at some of these fissures and putting some more violets and more obvious violets so I'm going to come back in there with that and give some of these some more obvious little bits of violet colour in there like so and let that disappear out into the water and the water sort of pushing on past it so you get this discoloration there something like that I hope and one or two marks coming down to this side and then I'm going to bring some of this bluish color that we have been using I'm going to literally create some of these little eddy marks that are coming away from this part of the uh, rock and there's some sort of around here so I'm going to mess that around a little bit like so I hope that's right uh, no I didn't gave the tube good squeeze it helped a bit but still needed to get yeah I think um, I think I might uh, put some cold press with mine tomorrow and just see if that works but it's um, a pain to get it right because you get a little bit too much and of course you've got a real oil slick going on and that's not going to really work for you either all right i'm going to come back in with a bit of warmth into that dark and just play around with that a little bit trying to create a movement in the water two marks this way trying not to make them like I nearly did sort of out of context they were very different to some of the others I don't want them all the same that's not what I'm saying I'm just trying to say that you know you get two thin ones they look sticks and they don't look right so I'm going to try and make them look as though they belong in the central, same general group and principle as all the others that makes sense I hope it does and bring some in through here now just suggest them coming all the way through the legs so that we get no start stop lines we can come back in through the legs and repaint those as we need to right 
maybe tomorrow, as I say, I might refine some of these, but at the moment I'm not got that firmly fixed in my head. I'm just going to see how I react to the painting when I see it after a night's sleep and uh, take it from there, I think. Okay. Um, there's a few more down through here. Little rock. There are a couple of more rocks that are sticking out here, but I haven't. I might put. I don't think I'll put them in. I didn't put them in the first painting. I don't think I really need to put them into this one. Um, says he. Because there's a bit of a sort of a lump of colour going over here with the water, like so, which I have just put in, and it sort of makes me think that I need to put those rocks in a little bit because there's like a little swell behind them a little eddy in front of them and I feel that they do need that um, a few colors down through here a few darker ones come in with some blue and a little bit of the red oxide just to put a few darker values in some of these like that we're going to come in with a lot more darks don't worry we we haven't sort of finished in that area now i'm going to leave the the sort of scantiness of this alone i quite like what that's doing but i want to put in a bit of warm on the end of this piece of rock here and coming down through the front of the bird there and that will come up to a piece of rock that's a little higher here. Like so, that's coming into the water. And that's got a light, a light part in there which we need to put in. And, oh my lord, look at the time. Right, I am... Um, very aware acutely aware of this time people um so please tell me if you've had enough at any point i will not be upset if you decide to do other things um by all means uh, i'm going to come in and i'm going to put in a little bit of light through here to the top of this and that comes down a bit like so and then we've got a shape that's coming down here like that and just goes off there's a bit more light to that part Okay, a little bit of light in there and down through there. And then I'm going to put in a little bits of light in the back of these flight feathers. A little barring that occurs. And a bit in there like so. Okay, I'll leave that like that. And I'll put in our lovely blue coloured shadow. I'll put a bit of blue. Come in there with this nice bit of shadow under here. But it actually does turn a little redder. So let's keep it quite light. Like so. And then come in with some stronger light into here. Just check that blue colour that's going away. A little bit lighter, I think that's better. Like that. You can see a very definite edge up through there on this flight, so I'm going to put that in like that. 
and then I will have to come in with a cleaner brush and um, just take that corner out with pure light and as I did before it got a little bit dark underneath where there are several feathers that are meeting at that point just a little bit more maybe a different blue color just to shift it okay that works and look at the dark value underneath our bottom as it, or its bottom and a little stronger dark under there just to take and reinforce that hard edge bring that through there like so and then I'm going to come down I'm going to put in the legs I'm going to come down with a bit more warmth in it than that and bring that down to there put our knuckle in our elbow as it were and then that comes down into there now I've got it quite blue at the moment that's going to change and put that sort of shape in there and then that comes down to there so we've got our legs in but what we're going to do is we're going to actually put some pink values into that now and it will become quite a slaty dirty pinkish droll color so i'm going to put that in and like so get a bit of light going on into that same on this one like so and there are some quite heavy dark marks which are just in shadow through there just in there a little bit down through there not too much tuck that away okay and then we've got a little bit of dark under the back end of the heel in there and there and we've got a little bit more pink showing and there and there which we can put that in and very much a little pinkish highlight on there maybe on there and what we've got to look at doing not with that we won't let's come out with that actually I'm going to mix the two whites together because there's a lot more fluid in the zinc white but the the it will be aided by the other and a little tap of yellow into that just take it off the pure white and what i want to try and do is just to uh, before we finish is to tap one or two of these lighter marks that are happening um, as little dips of color in the water and i want to put in that nice bit of white there on that bit of tile see that little bit of yellow really punches against the pale blue gives you that lovely white mark I'm going to tap one two lips into that and into that one not to contaminate everything too much and I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to look at punching up this if I can just a little bit more That works held my breath a lot let's come back into this this did suffer i'm going to put that little line down there and hopefully not there hopefully we can put in that lovely yellow white in there not over touching it too many times because it's just going to contaminate and hopefully that will give us a super highlight on the side of the bird like so, quite happy with that. Just lose that little bit that escaped off the end of the brush. Let's see, I'm over touching it, and that's the penalty you pay 
Why are we doing it? All right, so that I'm living with that. Now I'm going to put in the eye. I've been waiting to do that. I'm using lemon. I'm using it's quite it is a bright eye, but not in this context. So it's going to be a lemony violet. There's violet and lemon going in together, and I'm going to put those into the eye. It would be a lot brighter had it had the sun on it, but it hasn't. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to come in with a dark, which is a blue and a violet. And I'm going to look at drawing the edge around the eye. And I may have to come in and tweak it. I'm trying to keep my hand as steady as I can. Maybe a little bit warmer. Like so. Just tidy up the inner line. Ever so slightly. Okay. Bit of dark that squares off the ends but gives the roundness to the eye. Just a little tap there. That gives me a little mark there and there. Okay. Now actually I look at that and I think I've got a problem just there. So what I'm going to do is that take my eye away and I'm going to go over the area with a different value just in there like so now we've got a blind bird but not for long I hope I'm going to come back in there with that little light color again I felt when I looked at that that the eye was just a little too big and so I decided to wipe it out I have got to rest my little finger and be very, very careful about drawing back in the eye now. Okay. That looks to me a whole lot better. Alright, now we've got the little dark part of the eye just to pop back in and I think we have our eye just going to put in a little light uh, darker area through the back here which is very suggestive of that little muscle change that comes off the back of the eye and gives a little shadow going away I've got that slightly the wrong blue colour. I'm just going to change that by coming back in with another one. Maybe a little bit red into there just to shift it back to the violet that I was looking for. That's better. And not too much. We don't want to overdo it. It's a bit strong on the top. So let's just come in, tease some of that away. Lose some of the strength on that mark there. Okay. That's good. Want to come in and just put a little darker mark in there and in there. That's good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's look at the beak. And we've got that dark colour underneath the beak, which I want to put in. And that's a little bit too on the reddish side. Let's come in with some blue and um, the yellow to make a sort of more of a musty, mustardy colour and then there's a little bit more blue and greenier colour into the top mandible I'm going to put that in and I'm going to come back to a brush that I've been using that little um, brushes starting to split. I don't like that. And I don't like that either. So let's come back out of there. Let's play around with this for a short bit. Now I have got to come in and change the shape of that there. Just not quite right. Okay.
Okay, that's not so bad. A bit worried about it at first, but I want to take some of that red out of there. We've just gone a little bit too red going into there. Like that. And a little shape there. Just got to come in with a bit of dark down to where the beak goes up into the cheek. Blue, use the sharp edge, get that quite dark in there, and then you can just come back in and use the pale colours just to shape up a little bit there, like that, and a little bit there, and there's a little, oh, lost that, didn't mean to do that. Okay, I think I've got that coming back about right to the eye. But I just want to put a bit of light in one or two places. There's a definite, you know, you've got to look at the muscle structures under the eye, just a little bit of light under there, tapping into there. Maybe just a tap more than I'm showing. There you go. A little bit there, coming down again without going into the beak as I did the first time. Okay. Alright, I quite like that. I'm going to come in with a little red tap at the end, the little blood spot that I call under there. Just put that in. And the little nasal hole up there and then we've got to put just come in with a little tap of brighter yellow not too much mix way too much for my need just want to come up into this part here and suggest a little highlight on the top of the beak there Right, now I think my back of my head, just a wee bit abrupt there. I'm going to take that gently out a little bit more. Softly, softly, bring it round. Keep looking at it in conjunction of everything else. I'll live with that, I might change it. It may be a little too square now. In fact, I think it is. So let's go back the other way, a little about turn. Let's just come back in with a bit more blue, a bit more colour. Okay. Yeah. Got to be right. It may still need tweaking, but I think it's okay. Um, looking at this... Uh, Jim, deja vu of Friday night with a break. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Uh, Luke, are you off, mate? My phone is out of battery now. I have to go, but it's a bit late for me anyway. Never mind. Luke, catch it up, mate. I uh, hope to uh, see you again soon. Sorry about the time, guys. It is cracking on a bit. Uh, uh, Jim, deja vu. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be... It's yeah, that's very much the right Ben. Uh, da -da, smiling, or is it just me? If you say it's smiling, I'm going to dump you. Uh, he's probably laughing after the pricing pieces of fish and chips. Probably. Oh dear, here we go again. It's the beak problem as we had before. Right, let's deal with the beak. I mean, and we're just going to give that a little squaring off there. Straighten that bit up there. Mm. 
Hope he's not laughing too hard now. Okay, we are now 10 past two hours. Um, there's an awful lot left to do on this uh, in many regards. The bird is pretty much done, it has to be said. Um, there's not too much left to do on the bird. If everyone's happy, I should go a bit longer. And if you're not, then just say it's not a problem if you've had enough. But I thank you those who are still with me. I'm just going to put a little bit more light into some of this. Like so. And I want to start looking at tapping some whites. A little bit of tapping yellow, that's way too much. Should have seen that. I want to put in some of these little bits of ripple that are running through into one or two of these places and down in here. I'm not going to do too much of this because this is a very repetitive job. just want to give you the idea of doing some of it so that you know if you do your own version what it's, what's happening, what you're going to be doing and you know how to deal with that. Um, it would also be easier if the flipping paint wasn't so stiff. Oh, it's like trying to paint with thick butter, icy up butter. But you get the idea and I just wanted to put in one or two of these little taps. Now I have just done a, a nice piece of painting uh, of a gondolier and the driver. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry I said that. I know that's not going to go down well. Um, but you know what I mean. And um, yeah, I just wanted to put a lot of this sort of work into that. So there will be a film for my patrons coming out soon. It won't be this week, but it will be soon. Um, of that and showing how I sort of create that bit of light. Intense light in the case of that. But this is very much a similar sort of thing you're starting to see how certain little bits of light and color just play around on the edge of the rock in different places like that and um, okay I'm carrying on I'm carrying on um, with my faithful followers that's fantastic actually we haven't lost too many we've still got 20 which is fantastic uh, I'm quite happy to carry on guys uh, I just don't want to bore the heck out of all of you so I'm just going to put some traces of light up on here. One or two off of this, tapping some light into that. And before I, I'm going to leave that there for a second, and I'm just going to go off with this brush. And I'm going to try the same and see what the mark making is like with a small uh, filbert, a long filbert. It's got a different shape to it, but it might deliver an, a different mark. I'm not too sure yet. I'll give it a go. Uh, it's a little bit of a different mark, but it's probably not as nice as the first one. So I'm going to leave that. Take that out there, clear that brush out, because I need to put some darks back in these rocks and give them some weight, especially the ones in the foreground. They've lost out a little bit, so I'm going to lose that coming down to the bottom of my page, and I'm going to use some blue and some uh, red, the uh, oxide of red, and I'm going to really punch home with some of these dark marks into here and on some of these edges here and just give that rock uh, what it needs like so I know there are those ones further out and I was thinking of putting them in I decided not to but I might put that one in <laughs> what the heck put that one in there and, and leave the rest 
All right. Now I'm going to reinforce the dark on here. That's all I'm doing is just giving this sort of the strength that it needs to uh, work as a rock. And then I got that definite little shape in there, which is that holding that water reservoir and back down there like so. Taking that off and away. Lots more blue. Looking at the different fissures within the rock, and they're very, very soft. They're not, you know, they're going to have some highlights too. What we've got on there so far is merely the um, um, middle ground, as it were. Now we've got this dark around here. So this is the side of this rock. And coming down into there like so. And tapping away up there. And as I say, there is some stuff here. I'm not going to bother with that. Um, and we've got this dark in here, which is down into the water. And suggests that there is a little scoop in the rock. And that's holding that little bit of moisture in there. A little bit of shape up into there like that. And then I do need to put in that wonderful little um, reflection of this rock. And as it comes down in here, a little bit of dark on the edge of this rock. And we can use the negative space also. If you see here, you've got these little taps in here. That you can use those to create... Um, sort of negative passage of color so let's get that in first a little edge and the reflection in the water going back into there and that can come and join up something like that yes as i say you can come in here and you can create negative passages so you get this dark and it's sort of eating out into some of this blue like so and taps away and here it can go in like that. It looks like there's sort of hard edge water pumping it around there. You don't have to have it. You can then just tap it off and soften the effect quite easily. But I think that works. Let's look at this. This has got a whole uh, lot of different facets. Again, I'm not going to try and paint each and every one in. I'm just going to be a little bit creative, a little bit suggestive with one or two taps of dark up near the top, especially up in here, where there are some real strong differences with lights and darks. So I'm going to put the dark in first, and then we may just tap some lighter pieces over the top to end. Like so, bring one or two down here. A little crevice, let that come down through there and disappear into nothingness. And one or two down through this way. Lightening the taps, it becomes more sketchy and less um, actuality, as it were. It's just a little bit into there. And uh, a great exponent of doing this um, with the rocks and just letting it suggest more of what's going on without actually painting every subtle bit was David Shepherd. He was um, very, very good at doing that sort of thing. And you, you can look at many of his paintings and you'll see that method used in a lot. And he's a real master. But there you go. I'm just going to tap in one or two extras in here. Like so. And then I need to put in a warm. I'm going to put a warm, more brown colour. Darks into here, that's fine. But under here, I want a real dark. That's going to be my bit of the orangey color. A little bit down there, a little bit into there. And that's going to be a darker blue mark. But then I just want to suggest these um, reflections of the bird's leg. And I'm going to put a nice little streak to it like so, where the water's moving. They are joined like so. And 
And if I carry on, you'll see the bird as well. But I'm not doing that because obviously this rock will come down here and we will lose what's going on with regards to the bird. I'm going to put that in there and suggest that's the rock and some little eddies in the very bottom here holding and supporting water. And that works. And there's just the suggest of something coming in through the bottom here, which I'm not going to do too much with, just other than add a little bit of color variation there. May not have needed it, but I'm going to put it there for the moment. Um, all right, do I have a good light source? Or is this at this late hour? Oh, I just saw it come up. <laughs> come up my feed first. Uh, do I have a good light source at this late hour? Find it a problem when starting something bright? Data and then grad yeah um, I think what I what you've got if you look behind me Teresa you'll see a blackout blind well daytime or nighttime I use that blackout blind um, and shuts the natural daylight out because I face the south here my light is constantly changing depending on the cloud light and I just can't keep up with it so I then have two Daylight adjusted there, 5500, 5500 Kelvin. And they are daylight adjusted LEDs. So they're not hot and they're not expensive to run. And uh, two of them will cost you about 30 quid with uh, little bits of uh, diffuser on top of them. Very cheap. If you want me to give you some links, you can. Um, but yeah, um, to that end, it's easy peasy and um, you don't end up with problems. Your light also means to say that your painting becomes excuse me, fairly even across the whole thing. So even if it takes hours and hours and hours, the painting will end up very even overall. Just gonna change and shift some of that light down, put a bit of violet to that, just to take it off the pure orange and just to give me some little bits of highlight and a little bit too violet but a little bits of highlight into this rock face as it's coming down and I want to put some over on it. it's got a little bit too dark so I just want to put a little bit on the edge of that one maybe in there and <coughs> right just keep on going up the top here <clears throat> lose my voice a bit now and one or two marks in here and a couple of little, little suggested fissures edges on there dragging it all down little facets little changes in the rock structure right so And very much the same on this side. Let's use some of the same color. And let's just play around with some of these colors over here. Into this rock. And I'm using little taps. And I'm using the long filbert for this. This very long filbert. Uh, I bought them a long time ago from Rosemary. And I wasn't sure for ages whether I liked them or not. Um, and if I'm honest, I'm not still not that sure they're a nice brush they have a very very soft tip i know several artists plein air painters that use them and really enjoy them so um i i shouldn't shouldn't really sort of criticize them too much without giving them a fair crack of the whip so i will be using up my stock that i have at the moment and just see how I fare with those. I'm just going to tap around there and just suggest that you can see into the shadow and come back over onto more of this over here, which has been a little bit neglected. And we'll start coming into the final part of this. And one or two eating into the fissures of this, just using that lighter value, just dragging it into untidy little marks around the darkness of the rock and as that color mixes with the color of the dark doesn't matter because it's just like the uh, highlight is just disappearing out of sight and changing the shade as it were 
something like that. One or two get a little bit stronger again as they come and meet the light up here and come down and quite cool over here so let's come back in with some of that violet color much lighter and just play around with some of that I am having a whole heap of fun I've got to tell you I really enjoy painting this and, and again I push I push, push, push. I don't just settle for the first thing. I do keep pushing to see how I can do more than I did before. And I really, truly, truly, truly believe that. Um, so, yeah. Um, Yeah, daylight bulbs are okay, but they are tremendously expensive and they do concentrate the light a little bit too uh, in one area. Whereas the diffuser LED bulb, which is pretty much the same thing, is low cost and doesn't heat up and lasts a heaps longer. So whilst it is good to get a daylight bulb, it's to get the right one really more than any other thing. And just playing around with some shapes and colours into there. And take some light up into here from other sources. These are light, but they're not as light as the bird. The bird is the... And I've seen a couple of things on the bird I want to do to finish off, but we will see if there's time at the end to do that. Just a little bit of mist out paint there and there. And some more lights into this area of the rock down through here. As it disappears into the water. And the same on the back of this one. One or two variations on the ripples just to play around. And this is me pushing myself. This is me experimenting with the marks that I'm making more than just trying to replicate the things. I, I've done things like this before, but not necessarily uh, all together. And I just like to play with them and just to see where the colors and the values and the shapes all work out. Uh, that's all right. I'm enjoying it, Sue. Um, I really am. Um, if I didn't enjoy what I do with you guys, I certainly wouldn't spend all the time doing it. I really love it. Um, and your support, everybody, makes it all worthwhile, I've got to say. You know, it wouldn't be half as much fun if I didn't know you guys were there uh, watching it. Um, so it makes it all the more... I'm going to put in a little bit of cobalt blue and I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to go in with a bit of white and make it quite a pale flush. Now, do I need to change that? I'm going to actually add a little smidge of, that's not a little smidge of anything, that's a great big pile. Let's come off to one side and let's try and get that colour where we want it. There we go. I'm just going to rest easily, carefully. Just going to come in with a bit more blue into this light colour through here. Wasn't much, but it was enough, I think. Okay, where are we? Let's start winding down before everyone goes to bed. I think that my beak is still not right. I'm looking at it and I just really feel that I need to do something with that beak. So I'm just trying to suggest what I need to do. I need to come in with a bit of that pale color blue. I'm just going to come in and relax that down there.
Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to look into that. I'm not, still not convinced with it. I don't know if I did the right thing then or not. I think you got something and then all of a sudden you look at it again and it's just not what you thought. We shall see. I may add something to it tomorrow in the cold light of day. So, okay, we are well behind time. And <laughs> I think we're rapidly running. We're, we're losing people by the score. We're gone out two and a half hours now. So if... Uh, what I'm going to do is just one or two more of these marks and um, start winding it up as I'm talking to you. And um, I'm going to come back into that brush that I was using. And yeah, just sort of literally wind it up, I think. Take some of that off, make that little bit of liquid work a bit more for me. And just put one or two little sparkles of light in the water. So, okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, we're pretty much sorted. And, you know, we can go on and on and on and uh, keep... This could be another three or four hours of painting bits and pieces but um, I think that uh, you've got the gist of it all I'm sure I hope you have anyway and um, I will look at this in the morning and see if I think that I need to do much more to it or just enjoy it as it is but it's I'm quite pleased with the fact that we actually you know, I've managed to pretty much paint a 12 by 16 in this time. I know I do do it when we have a physical demonstration at the gallery, but um, I don't normally tackle something of this nature either. This is quite a, a big subject to tackle. Um, for a demonstration. Just want a few taps up in here, just bits and pieces of water. Just try and look at the way the water flows and what's remaining wet and what's catching the light. Little taps of bits and pieces. Like so. Let's see the state of my palette here. I'm being now just cleaning that up, I think. Okay, well, I'm going to tap away for a little bit more, and, and that's it. Um, i got to say, I'm getting quite tired now, so um, I'm sort of ready to call it a day, I think. And, um, and as the numbers are dwindling down to 15, I've sent some to sleep, I'm sure. Um, but... Um, It is what it is. I've had a great deal of fun tonight, guys and girls. And I hope you had fun too, watching this. Um, do people paint along with you in the gallery? Uh, no, they, the, the idea of the demos, John, in the gallery is that they sort of... Um, 
sit in the audience and hurl insults normally. That's what happens. Um, Yeah, I'm going to pull that up a bit, Wendy. I think that's. I think you're right. Just needs to have a little bit more of a curve on the front end. Hard to see it, but I think that's what it is. There's a little highlight going through there as well. I think that might have nailed it. I might have got it with it. I don't know. You tell me, Wendy. I think that's better. Uh, that's great. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Michael. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, I meant where the beak joins the head. Yeah, no, I quite like where that's at. Um, I think that there's a little lift to it, which is not possibly shown there. And that white just comes down a little harder. Into there. Very hard one. I think it's going to be a case of the morning and just see where that's at. I know one thing I've done with the beak is I've taken the area there it's wrong. I need to come back in and change the area of the nasal. And just tap in the dark for that, which is actually about there. Not where I had it. Uh -huh. Oh, come on, Judy, tell me. If you think it's wrong, it's wrong. I've got to deal with it. It's not, you know, I've got to get it right. Um, I'm struggling with this. I'm not talking now. Ah, another great demonstration of oil painting. Thank you, Derek. I take it you think the beak is okay. <laughs> right, I'm going to down tools. Thank you so much for saying it's better. I was getting a little bit paranoid about the beak. <laughs> State at me. Right, we are way late, people. I am so sorry about the length of time that's been involved. There is still work to be done on this, I feel. Although I'm very happy with the way it's gone. Um, and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Great, Jim. Thank you very much. Talk to my son, Stuart, about learning to fly your drone. Cheers. Okay, I'll give Stuart a call. I haven't been in touch with him for years, so that would be good. 
Um, yeah, I haven't talked to either of your lads in years, to be quite honest. Uh, about the time I caught up with both of them. Um, but yeah, that'll be cool. Um, <sighs> well, there you go. Sorry, Paul, I shouldn't have said anything. No, don't worry. If it's got to be done, it's got to be done. I Yeah, it's not a case. I, I get very close to it, so it's very hard sometimes to see something until the cool light of day. But I think overall, I think we've managed the job quite well. Um, I think that the painting has evolved. There's one or two little bits and pieces that I want to tweak. Uh, maybe tomorrow I'll have a look at it. So there may be, but not a lot. I'm not going to do too much. I don't think it needs too much. Um, it's a nice little oil study of the gull at St. Moore's. And um, yeah. I'll probably send it down there to the gallery um, when it's framed and uh, he can sell it literally <laughs> 30, 40 feet from where I saw the gull. <laughs> and he can probably point the new owner of the painting when it gets sold down to the rocks and show him which rocks it stood on. <laughs> and there you go. But um, it is it is what it is. And as I say, it's it's been a lot of fun. Um, and you know I'm sort of always looking at it I'm looking at one or two bits of it right now that I think might need changing um, I'm not too sure about this area here down the side I've got a sneaky feeling that it just wants tapering down a bit but I will look in the morning because I'm getting really tired now so I don't think I'm going to bother doing that um, yeah I think it does John I think uh I mean, a lot of paintings can um, have a different energy with regarding to the medium that you put them into. And uh, to that end, some will work better with others, as it were. So that's cool. Cheers for another great painting, Paul. Cheers. Thank you very much, Bramley Junction. Appreciate the comment and thanks for looking in. Jeff, thank you very much. For the uh, for joining us, and you were the first on board tonight. Thank you for doing that and being around. Uh, Wendy, don't worry about what you said. Uh, you you certainly you know that's what I asked for. It's a little bit of criticism because if it needs changing, it needs changing. It's as simple as that. Um, so there's no problems at all. Judy, are you happy with the beak? Hmm hmm hmm. <laughs> Uh, Teresa, are you still there? Charmaine, are you still there? I don't know. I'm shouting. I don't know why I'm shouting at you because you can't hear me or do anything else, especially if you're not there anymore. Um, and James, are you still there or are you working on that shed? <laughs> or are you working on that shed and still there? Yeah. Right, okay. So we are... Um, probably approaching here we are approaching three hours i'm sorry guys it's been a bit of a poor luke gave up in the end <laughs> uh judith thank you very much as usual ben thank you very much um yeah there's a lot more of those little details that really want to go into being there but um I think it's maybe I stopped because I didn't want to overdo them and I may take some out, put some more in, but I think you get the idea and um, hopefully I will. this painting will be dry by uh, the watercolour stream on Friday and um, I will uh, probably just pop this under the camera and let you see if I've made any significant changes, if I haven't, then I won't bother. But if I made some significant changes to it, then uh, I'll pop it under the camera uh, for the first few minutes so you can all see it and see what happened in the uh, end of the day. Um, yeah, you're right. It's got a lot more life. And um, I think the, um, yeah, there's a little bit of differences and changes, but, you know, who's to say that, the next millisecond the bird wasn't in, a comp in exactly the same position as I put it in. <laughs> That's my excuse. All right, guys and girls. Um, thanks ever so much, as always, for your kindness in watching, support, 
Um, I wish I could get some more of the people that are sitting quietly on the side watching just to announce themselves and say hello uh, and who it is. Uh, that would be fantastic. Um, yes, I'm definitely leaving it till the morning, Judy. That's absolutely going to happen. I will sleep on it and see what happens. Good night, Bramley Junction. Thank you very much again. Um, and good night to everybody, really. I am going to go off and have a well-earned Guinness. Um, and um, i catch all of you, I hope many of you, on Friday at 7 o'clock. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I have no idea what I'm going to paint. But uh, if you've got any ideas, put them in the comment section under this video Tomorrow, when it's up, it will take until probably lunchtime tomorrow before it's been processed by the YouTube algorithms, uh, before you see it. But when you do, put a comment down there. And, um, yeah, if you've got any ideas, I'll listen. I won't always follow them. <laughs> but I might do, you never know. But uh, I will think on what I want to do in watercolour this week. And... Um, then we go from there, guys and girls. And uh, take care, everyone. Something without water, please. Something without water? John, we love water. <laughs> uh, great. Okay. Yeah, Jeff, cheerio. And I'm going to enjoy my beer for sure, mate. Um, take care, everybody. I'm going to give this a few more minutes of the stream for people to say goodbye to everybody. But then I will just switch it off and I bid each and every one of you good night. And thank you for the support. Again, as I get covered it in paint, look at the state of me. Covered in flipping paint. All right. Have a bit of a tide up on this palette. Ready for the morning. More painting tomorrow. Take the worst of it off. Bye, John. Good night, Mark. Thanks for joining us. Jeff. Oh, no signature. Jeff, you're right. I will do that. I will do that before I switch off, I promise you. But it actually, technically, it's not finished yet. <laughs> that could be my excuse. Let's just put something in the bottom here. There you go, mate. All signed. All done. Still got a handful of white paint. Right, just cleaning the brushes through. Get them ready for tomorrow. There's still 12 of you watching, apparently, according to my thingy with Jiggy Bobby.
Good night, everyone.